to this new episode of the Picture Hub Show, um, where we talk about content creation and the business behind and the creators themselves. Today with me, I've got Varaido and Ash. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So for the audience, uh, tell us more about uh, who you are and, and the things that you do. So ladies first, I guess. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So my name is Varaido Nyakunika. Dubai. I am a lawyer by profession. Um, I am also a fashion designer and I am an R&B artist. Yeah, okay. I'm a singer. Yeah. <laughs> so you're really in the business of creating. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Love, love, love creating. It's, it's quite a passion of mine. And Ash? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ash. Um, I am a strategist and a creative at mm -hmm. heart. Uh, I am somewhat of a DJ on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess everyone is, but uh, yeah. That's where I'm. Okay. And yeah. also a podcaster. Right? And a podcaster. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in today's episode, we're talking about influencer marketing. Right. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, uh, you can uh, tell us, you know, what do you understand by the term uh, influencer marketing? Um, basically, I mean, I would like the way I understand it yeah. is that um, it's a... It's, it's marketing, but in a very modernized way, very unconventional way. It's, um, it's, it's a new way that the kids are doing it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's, it's social media, it's, um, it's uh, influencers, which are people who are appealing to people, people mm -hmm. who have numbers, people who, have, um, uh, who do certain things that attract um, people, and the people being the the consumers who are eventually going to buy the product. So it's basically a very fun way of, um, of, of getting product out there to the people. Yeah, a very modernized, um, exciting, young, fresh way of doing it. I've got a question for you from what you've said. <laughs> but Ash, let's hear your, your take on it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much uh, what, uh, what I just said. It's just more, um, it's, it's, it's getting people who can uh, influence a certain a degree of, 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 of a purchase from 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 a brand a for a brand mm -hmm. uh, which is which which can come in the forms that uh, I talked about your social media it can be physically a person who just goes around and actually sells the product itself mm -hmm. basically you are a, um, a high level salesperson mm -hmm. for a certain pro product and you have the influence to make people change their decisions or mm -hmm. may maybe have them do something that you want them to do, depending on what your uh, objectives are. Uh, that's what an influencer is. So, based uh, on what you both said, mm -hmm. um, is this a new phenomenon or is it something that has existed before? Because we're talking about, basically it's more of, this person is a bridge between a person or a product that needs to get to a person. Mm -hmm. Has Is this like something new or it's something that's, always been there? I think it's always been there, but it's more amplified mm -hmm. now, especially because we are living in a techno technological era. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the uh, at celebrities or just people of influence back then, I mean, whatever they did, people w were admirable of whatever whatever yeah. it was that they were doing. Like, for example, you look at Princess Di, Diana. Yeah. Yeah. There, was, it, there was no social media, there was no Instagram, there was mm -hmm. nothing like that. But whatever she wore, for example, yeah. bags, shoes, it, it immediately, they, it, it just people wanted whatever she had. And yes. that really helped out the, the companies and the brands yeah. that were creating whatever it is that she had. Yeah. So I'll give an example of um, uh, Dior, the yeah. brand, Christian Dior. Yeah. There's the Lady dye bag, yeah. the Lady Dior bag, is literally inspired by her because she used to wear it all the time. Yeah. And so that has become such a, um, a, uh, a, uh, a staple piece for that brand. Yeah. And it's very expensive to get that bag because of the, the history that comes yeah. with it. Yeah. So it was there, but I feel like now it's more amplified because people have more access to, uh, to, to technology and to seeing things. We are more connected as a world yeah. and um, people are... Uh, there's more people who are appealing, people who have, who, who people want to be, mm -hmm. and they're more accessible because yes. you can actually see them on Instagram, you can see them on TikTok. Yes. And so it just, to answer the question, yeah. it was always there, but it's more amplified. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, to, pick, to take it even further back, um, I know this is a bad, bad example, <laughs> but uh, back in the day, they used, to, they used to have doctors endorsing things, mm -hmm. remember? 
um, in, in the United States, at some point, they were endorsing uh, smoking and saying yes. smoking is good. Yes. Yes. But the point of it was that um, you have someone who has influence vouching. And, and vouching. Okay. And they have a level of... I guess it's cre loaning credibility. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Because if you can be like this person, if I can be like Varaito, mm -hmm. I, I want to be like her because she looks good and, and she, she's, she's a cool person. Mm -hmm. So uh, the best way to do that is for, for people to be, for her to actually influence those people to say, listen, if you want to dress like me, I, I, I dress in Louis, I dress in that and that and that. So then that influences the people to actually get uh, the, the products that she needs. Uh, long story short, yeah, it's been around for, yeah. for a while. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's just that the mediums have changed and it's, more, it's quicker. Um, you, or you get online, you can get to any celebrity within one click. Exactly. And you now see, okay, this is what they're wearing, this is what they're doing these days, these are the products that they're that they uh, advertising, mm -hmm. and it's easier in those. Yeah. In so yeah. when, when is it necessary for a brand to engage an influencer? Uh, so when, when you're also thinking about it, there's, uh, I'll give myself as an example, mm. Uh, I'm a content creator. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, of course, I've got a team, but before, I was just like a solo. When, when do you engage? Is it when you grow in size, or is engaging an influencer what makes you grow in size, or do big brands like Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a global brand. Mm -hmm. I, I once read something that said, um, there's two things that you'll find anywhere in the world. It's a Catholic church and a Coke. That's true. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> do you, so does a brand like Coke mm. need an influencer? And do does the um, solo guy, you know, small budget, you know, do you when do you when's the right time to engage? I think both the solo guy and mm. and Coca Cola yeah. both need influencers because. Um, in as much as Coca-Cola is an established brand and people know about it, um, as humans, naturally, we're quick to, to forget or to, mm. to just get over something. Yeah. So we need, to, we need, we need constant, constant reminders, reminders yeah. that there's Coca-Cola. Yeah. And we, know, we, need, we, need, we need the Coca-Cola Cola people to, um, to so not rebrand, mm. but to make it more exciting. Yes, it's the same product, mm. but you're giving it to us in a different way, yeah. you know, and making it more um, desirable. So, yes, I think if you're established, I think it's, you know, like I've seen Chicken Inn, for example, it's yeah. already established, like we know Chicken yeah. Inn, yeah. Um, but they're always, always, always trying to find celebrities and people who people look up to, to just continue reminding us that mm. they're there, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. And then, of course, the solo guy, I mean, to start off, it might be a bit expensive or whatever, but it, it, it is a good idea mm. to, um, you know, to to get somebody to, to just reach people and mm. find ways to, to be known yeah. because you want awareness. People mm. need to know about yeah. you. And yeah. I mean, there's no better way than getting people who are influencers to, to, to tell the world about your existence. Exactly, yeah. exactly. No, it's, you're very right there. Yeah? Because uh, what happens is, uh, uh, this is brands, are, uh, it's a relationship you have with the yeah. brand. Yeah. And uh, sometimes you, you need to... <laughs> exactly. <That's laughs> because, <laughs> because it's like... Uh, because <laughs> <laughs> what happens is that... Uh, I'll give you a perfect example is Coca-Cola mm -hmm. uh, right now. <laughs> um, if Kuchi Zira, that relationship, what happens is that a Pepsi will come through. Exactly. Okay. And a Pepsi will then say, listen, I'm going to do this, that, and the other for you. And you know what? You're my girl. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you are just quiet. You can't, you, you can't keep a relationship like that. So yeah. you have to keep getting um, the new people, the people that, 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 uh, that personify the brand the best it can be yeah. to keep talking about it so that, exactly. a per so that people then um, gravitate towards that. And, and people keep saying, no, you know what? I'm associated with this brand because mm -hmm. This person is there, and I believe that their values uh, dovetail with my values. Exactly. And that then makes the product, it keeps continuing generation after generation after generation. Yeah. 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 So I, I like what you just said, mm. where it's like you're saying the, your values or your core message mm. dovetails with what this influencer is. Yeah. yeah. The question now is, uh, first of all, the, the different questions, but I'll start with, how do you then get to choose that this person is a fit for my audience? Mm -hmm. How do you know to say, okay, maybe uh, Ja Fraser or Madame Boss mm -hmm. 
you know, or, or do you choose between? Yeah, how, how do yeah. you choose? Okay, so if it's not a bad budget thing, yeah. then obviously you want to look for somebody that um, is uh, is in line with your brand, mm -hmm. because not everyone is going to work for whatever it is that you're yeah, trying to yeah, sell. Yeah. So you really have to do the research and and um, understand your audience, understand mm -hmm. your market, mm -hmm. and understand who exactly would be the perfect fit for that person. Mm -hmm. So I think it's basically it, it's 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 research and mm -hmm. it's it's deciding based on your specific product and who you want to get it to. Got a question on yeah. that, but yeah. Yeah. exactly, absolutely. Because um, no offense to anybody, but some brands don't fit other brands. Yes. You can, your, your audience can tell this, mm -hmm. this is a forced fit, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. First and foremost, I believe um, whenever, whenever we, we're choosing in terms of for our clients, in terms mm -hmm. of our influencers, first things is first is we need the influencer to actually actually like the product exactly. okay. and actually actually what if it's a questionable product give i'll give an example yeah. you saw the balenciaga mm. situation mm. where mm. their advertising was um yeah. uh, concerning like uh, i don't she know how toddlers. yeah it had to do with sexualization of in like toddlers mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. how uh, and and at some point kanye was representing that brand mm -hmm. and his kind of brand these days is like i'm a christian father husband yes, kind. Yes, yes. and the two seem opposed right. how how does that work it it doesn't it, it, well it shouldn't yeah. uh, in a way because you because yeah, when so man is involved how do you know <laughs> if this person is genuinely uh using the product another good example is you know the actor gal gadot Mm. With, um, Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. She was paid by Huawei mm. as a brand ambassador. Mm. And she was tweeting about Huawei. And you know the thing with iPhone? It tells mm. you that yeah. you're using an She's iPhone. She's tweeting oh, by God. Huawei and it says sent from an <laughs> iPhone. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That, that was a black. You see, those are, that's why I'm saying that the, the best fit would be that uh, y the influencer um, has to partake in the brand 100% mm. or, or, or not at all. Yeah. Because what happens is that you you then get situations like this where you're tweeting from an iPhone for Huawei, mm -hmm. and it, it it doesn't it doesn't look well for the brand at the end of the day. Um, it, money well now now it depends. Maybe there's there was a lot of guap. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a, uh, let's not lie to each other. Sometimes you're like you know what the money is there, but yeah, yeah. 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 Because sometimes it's just basically about the money. Mm. You know, most people, especially the influencers, will do it for the money. Mm. And then they would try and do a little bit of research and mm. just, you know, sort of they're like, so, so that they're like in line with, mm. with the brand. Mm. But it's a bit difficult to find somebody who's going to be thoroughly and totally in love or with like the with the brand. Mm. Unless it's something that like, you know, like Apple, for example, mm. and they use an, an iPhone and mm. they really know a lot about it. Yeah. But the reality is that most of the people who are going to do, um, uh, most of the brands that are going to look for influencers, mm. it, I'll use Zimbabwe for an example, for, for, as an example, is um, they, they just, most people are just disconnected. That's the mm, reality. Mm, mm, and yeah. most brands in Zim that are trying to, um, to, to use influencers are small brands. Mm. I mean, they are big brands, mm. but there's, most of them are small brands and you hear about it for the first time when you're called and you're asked to be an influencer and then you try and, because you want the money, mm, yeah. you would just accept it mm -hmm. and then you do your research, mm. but then you don't end up putting 100% putting in it. It's mm. just, it's about so, money at the mm, end of the yeah, day. That's yeah. the downside of mm, it. Mm. But yeah, I think, Mm. That's yeah. That, mm. That's it. Yeah. So you will find that, uh, as 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 says, it's it's more to do with how much am I willing to. <laughs> yeah. So so you see, sometimes you have a, a situation where you have a, you have an agreement with uh, with a certain brand. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a couple of brands where the the agreement with the influencer was not a hundred percent. It was like just mention, yeah. just mention it's, us yeah. 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 in your everyday yeah, conversation. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. We don't mm -hmm. you don't have to be hundred percent with it. Yeah. Just mention that you've tried or this that and the other mm -hmm. yeah. so you then decide what level you're going to get involvement obviously the higher the money yeah, the more the involvement yeah, exactly. but uh, sometimes it's just a mention that gets people to uh, that like your your page or your your, your mm -hmm. then they they switch on to it mm -hmm. and then they're like okay yeah i like it but she's not really really endorsing but yeah. then and then they, you then from there you channel them to i guess they, another they, uh, another angle mm -hmm. is what you're saying is like maybe product placement. Exactly. Almost you know, the like product is there, but you don't really 
speak about it or say, mm -hmm. but just because you you have it in your vicinity, mm -hmm. people are like, whoa, I saw that on the thing. Yeah. And then it becomes an influencing thing mm -hmm. as well. It, it, there's, okay. There are certain levels. that Another angle that I'm thinking about now is, I think we're speaking of a relationship where it's more of the brand has more power than the influencer. Mm. But it can be reversed where, like a Cristiano Ronaldo, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. where it's more of the brand is uh, morphing to fit the, 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 the influencer. Yes, yes, yes. It can, that happens a, a lot, yeah. Yeah, like your Kanye is probably one of them. Because he will do something and then like, oh my God, he's yeah, done it. Exactly. And then you, and then you have and It also just them. brings the, prob the problem that... Um, some some of these ads by these influencers, you can you can tell that they're forced, mm. and instead of actually attracting me towards yeah. the product, I'm mm. just like, okay, yeah, no, I see you. no, exactly. Yeah, I see then you. you're just you just continue scrolling. You're mm. like, I'm so not interested. That so topic. It's also. I mean, that uh, that point then leads to authenticity for mm. me. Mm. How, like, where do you draw the line? Because, um, say, you're Apple and you're Kanye. Mm. Who, where do we draw the line? in terms of authenticity because the people who follow you follow you for a specific reason mm -hmm. you know and the people who like your products like them for a certain reason and i think to some extent you want to protect that brand identity mm -hmm. and i think it's the same for for you the mm -hmm. the influencer mm -hmm. where do we draw the line to say who morphs to whose uh yeah mm -hmm. i think it's about um it's just accepting that you can't accept everything, mm. you know, okay. and just be, be real with yourself and mm. just being honest with yourself. Because mm. as the, the consumers, when we, if I'm looking at a page, a celebrity's page, and they are Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, and they're a soccer star. Mm. And then, I, I mean, it makes sense if they're advertising, I don't know, soccer boots exactly. or something like that. Mm. And then you see him advertising something that's unrelated to him. It's a bit but like, like, it's a bit shaky. But and like and rubber bands or something. No, no, something but, like yeah, but know, look, you know. look, the other thing is this. Um, he, especially, uh, Christian is a good example. He's mm. got his own brand of underwear. Mm. Okay, that makes sense if yeah. it's something that he started yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's a business venture that he went into. Okay, mm. that's understandable. Mm. But like, if, if there's just too much going on, 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 on his page, so he's got soccer boots and he's got rubber bands and he's doing watches and then tomorrow somebody comes and says, can you advertise my drink? And he's mm. like, yeah, I'm in. Tomorrow he's changing his hairstyle to do dreads because mm. somebody came in and he wants to, you know. Just, it, it just becomes a bit too yeah, much, you know. Yeah, so I think maybe just keep it, just limit it uh -huh. and be selective mm. of what exactly you are going to do Is so that it's not just too much. Because sometimes it, just, it mm. just shows that, okay, you're on Instagram or on whatever social media platform because you were just trying to get money. Mm. And then I saw of disconnect with you as a consumer yeah. because it's just too much going on you know yeah. Yeah. You, you're very right yeah. uh, I'll, I'll give you an example um, no no again I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody <laughs> yeah. but uh, they, they, there was a point where every single brand that I worked on yeah. wanted Japraiser to represent mm. so no offense to him he's a he's good <laughs> he's a cool dude I love him to death but I'm like my guy, what has this got to do with, with him. him right now? Exactly. No, he's the popular guy. Da, da. Okay, cool, I get it. But your brand, what, the values of your brand mm -hmm. versus the, his values, are they, are they matching? That's the thing about, uh, to answer your, other, your first mm -hmm. question about Kanye and, and, mm -hmm. and Apple, mm -hmm. you, the, she, she's very right. You, you have to find a line and say, okay, I can't accept everything. Mm -hmm. Both sides have to know that I'm going to have to give and take. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. uh, if 70 to 80 to 90% of your values match mm -hmm. then you will always be okay yeah. you'll always be okay because some of the things you can't be for example a drastic example you can't be um uh, a, a, a like a i'm using this as a drastic yeah. example you are a satanist and you want to endorse christian products bibles yeah. or, something. or bibles you know what I'm saying? It like, <laughs> even though you're the most popular satanist <laughs> in the world <laughs> it doesn't sense. make sense right? you get what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah but but um, the other question is this how are we not also making assumptions because mm. you're both gatekeeping your audience mm. as apple you are making assumptions that my audience are Susan. Susan works in a um, corporate job. Susan has an X amount of income. But maybe there's Peter who's maybe not employed um, but wants to impress Susan, you know. Mm. And he will spend everything he gets to get that iPhone, mm -hmm. you know. 
aren't we making assumptions? How do we know exactly what our, our audience the fact that Peter knows about iPhone is maybe doing a good job. Really <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but you, you assume, I mean, when you're marketing, mm -hmm. you, you have a client profile. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, you're not spraying to everyone. Mm -hmm. How do you know that the profile that you've created mm -hmm. hasn't left out all the college students who are trying to uh, impress chicks? I think more than anything, your, you, you, the feedback that you get back from your clients, you'll find that... Um, when you get um, a certain level of influence on a, on a culture, on a, on a whole culture of mm -hmm. people, and you get, uh, if you're doing your job right, yeah. or if you, if you want to do your job right, you need to get feedback okay. from, from, from people and see if it's okay. Okay, uh, guys, we, we did this ad for, for iPhone, mm -hmm. but the people who are responding the most are college students. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means that we need to talk to them directly. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of do but a how bit do you, more intelligence. How do you measure? Because that was my next question. Mm. Are there tools that you can use to measure whether, um, like, like what type of audience? Yeah, those, the, those, those annoying things that you get sometimes about surveys, those five questions, yeah. that's part of it. Yeah, that's part also of it. Insights. Yeah, you know, if you're running a page, mm -hmm. um, and um, if it's Apple's page, yeah, yeah. they will see who's, who's engaging and the what, most, yeah, the and what the and content what, is exactly. that's engaging them. And what they Oh, so I guess now it's now a matter of don't ignore that information. No, 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 no. <laughs> you mustn't ignore it. Important. Yeah, because yeah. because the like. Uh, the people that you're ignoring now, yeah. just just walk with them. If they're part of and they're very active, walk with them. Mm -hmm. You may not understand them now, but try and understand them because they're going to be the, the decision makers later on. Yeah. Um, I, I see that. That's, with, a, that's a very yeah. interesting observation. Yeah, because they will. At some point, they, they're going to have the power and, you, and you'll be like, oh, who so, are these guys? Yeah. So I guess maybe expand on that. I, I think I get it because it's something I've been researching on. Right, right. But I think like... Ex, ex, Ex explain it further like okay so sometimes when you uh, we get we, sometimes we get uh, tied up as marketers and and uh, and uh, creative people to say this is my target market i'm going to talk to these people only da, da, da. Mm -hmm. but your message sometimes has to also include the ones that are going to come up and and become them because mm -hmm. sometimes you're talking to the person who who you target who you want your target market to be mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying so yeah. So I'll give you an example. Um, if I'm talking about iPhones, uh, that's why you see sometimes uh, some some of the advertising like, I don't get this. Yeah. You don't get this because you because someone else your daughter gets it, yeah. and exactly. she and and she knows what it is that you're talking about. Exactly. It's like you know you don't get this. That she she's the one explaining it to you. Like, what? <laughs> so now how do how do brands get in a position where? Uh, okay, so this question is two parts. Mm. How do brands position themselves? to be able to anticipate that, you know, how, how do they begin to... R&D, boss. And how does an influencer do the same? You have to do R&D. Research and develop. You have to constantly research your audience. You have to constantly research... So as a solo. Yeah. As a solo, you... Yeah. Yeah. How, how would you do it as a solo? Okay, so for example, like, I, I did mention the insights thing, because yeah. it yeah. really does help me to yeah. just sort of understand what type of people and what age group yeah. that, 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 I, that follow me or, mm, and yeah. what they're interested in. Mm. I also see um, the engagement. Mm. Sometimes I could post something and I'll be like, I think people are going to love this mm. and I'm going to get a lot of likes and mm. a lot of comments and then that's not what happens. Mm. And then you post something that you actually don't care about and you're mm. just like, oh, whatever. And then you but see you people know. actually engaging, <laughs> yeah, and, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's also trial and error. Mm. You also, you know, see what's happening on the ground mm. and then you make decisions based on that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and don't ignore the little guy. Yeah. <laughs> the little guy will become a big guy exactly. sometime. Yeah. sometime. So, um, when I think sometimes when we enter these relationships as influencer and the business, they, and, and I guess sometimes there's contracts, and you know there's the end of a contract, but when, is, when, when would you say is the time where it's time to call it quits? To break the relation say we've got a 10-year contract but then the results are not matching or maybe there's controversy mm -hmm. how do you uh, I've got an example of the controversy but first mm -hmm. maybe 
how, how would you? I think legally, first of all, yeah. don't get into a ten-year contract. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the lawyer <laughs> you're speaking. Yeah, 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 the Are you speaking married, in. first of all? <laughs> <laughs> So if, if you come to me, my advice is uh -huh. no, you can't do the 10-year contract. Uh -huh. um, you can start off with a three to six-month uh -huh. contract and uh -huh. see how it goes. Because uh -huh. again, well, three to six months. yes, because wow. things can happen in that, for example, there's Kylie, Kylie Jenner. Mm. She got, it was, I think it was Pepsi, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is, yeah. And there was a very big controversy that happened with the Black Lives Matter. I don't know what yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm sure, if, imagine if that was like yeah. a three-year contract. And you're, and you're already, you, your first advert mm. was drama because yeah. obviously that had to stop because mm -hmm. she couldn't continue continue because people already had this idea that mm. that you know she's not fit for the position yeah. so my advice is always just start with a very you know a short-term mm -hmm. contract mm -hmm. um and then the second question was how do you call it quits yeah. um in the contract you can always just write yeah. things like that that's why contracts yeah. so there you add clauses mm -hmm. that talk about um pass, uh, when you can terminate the contract so then you 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 draft the contract according to whatever your product is whatever your business is yeah. and and whatever the circumstances are mm -hmm. so yeah that's basically how it should happen mm -hmm. there should be a contract it's yeah. very very important yeah. Yeah. and both parties should understand that you know things could go great mm -hmm and you know we could extend this yeah. contract yeah. or things could go sour yeah. and you know it might end up just having to be t terminated yeah. mm -hmm. because there's a lot of money involved in mm -hmm. this in, in this influencership mm -hmm. and if it doesn't work out you want to move on quickly to the next person that mm -hmm. might be able to help you mm -hmm. so that people don't forget about your product mm -hmm. yeah so it's very important to be on your toes all the time mm -hmm. yeah but how do you uh, um i mean that's the legal side mm -hmm. that's the procedure of terminating when do you uh, what things can you put in place so that it's like a red flag that comes up, okay, things are not going where we, we want them to if go. If you're not getting the numbers, mm -hmm. you're not getting the response that mm -hmm. you're expecting, mm -hmm. people are not warming up to whoever that person is, mm -hmm. and it looks forced, mm -hmm. those are some of the red flags mm -hmm. that you know that you should Or just know. blatant actual hostility to the whole thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because, okay. yeah, the people can probably say, because sometimes, you know what happens with people and brands? Mm -hmm. People, the brand, by the way, is not owned by the company. The brand is in the people and, and what they feel about, about your yeah, brand. Yeah. That, that's, they own it. And sometimes they may see that Ash is not the right fit for this brand. Yeah. What are you doing True. with Ash? You know what I'm saying? Mm. No, we don't want it. And then you try and force Ash on it. Mm -hmm. The yeah, yeah. disaster. Yeah. So those red flags where it's, it's blatant from your But from to your bring audience. it back to you, mm. you said in your strategy, you should also be looking to the next generation that's coming up. Yes. And when you look at even like, I mean, it's always the case. I mean, if, even like now, I mean, when you look at our parents and the generation, mm. the younger generation that's the now, mm. it's like two different people who grew up in two different yeah. times. Yeah. How, the person who would be appealing to your parents mm. is not the same person who's going to be appealing to your daughter. Exactly. So how, do you, how do you do that in a way that then doesn't lead to the fit not? Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, um, the, 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 for, for me, yeah. I've always believed this, uh, that you can have more than one influencer. Yeah. And Definitely. you can you can even play them off each other so that uh, there's ways of doing that in such a manner that it may not be in the space that we're playing in. So let, let me give you an example. This is a rudimentary example. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to, uh, if I'm selling um, g uh, golf clubs, yeah. as an example, mm -hmm. golf clubs for a person like older, I would go to the golf uh, to the golf club themselves mm -hmm. and, and be do direct marketing mm -hmm. and have uh, Tiger Woods always at the uh, at country clubs going around doing whatever. Mm -hmm. Then, for the younger generation, what do I do? I do TikTok videos. Exactly. Oh, about they use different <laughs> yeah, I do exactly mm -hmm. TikTok videos where it's fun, you, it's bright, it's mm -hmm. they're, they're doing weird things with the ball and all that. <laughs> exactly. So, so you you're doing it, you're doing both, but mm -hmm. uh, they meet they meet somewhere, but they both think the brand is cool because Tiger Woods is, is, mm -hmm. is coming to our country yeah. club, mm -hmm. and they're looking at that and like, oh, that's cool, you got orange, yellow ball, da -da, yeah. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that you kind of you have to kind of strategically uh, place them in such a way that. The, you make you get him the maximum impact, yeah. but at the same time, bang for your buck. Yeah. Mm. So, the other question is, um, example, mm. um, is you see what happened with Ronaldo in the last last season? I guess maybe it was still mm. 
where now he had to then leave Manchester. Mm. And uh, I mean, the circumstances. Mm -hmm. We all know that. I mean, he's a good player. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I guess that's also debatable with some. <laughs> <laughs> but um, your brand that's associated to this person who's taking uh, a beating, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. in the media for something that uh, they may or may not have control over, mm -hmm. you know. Do, when do you stick with that person or do you just drop someone quickly and, and disassociate? As the brand, yeah. maybe you can. I was going to say, didn't this, something similar happen with Kanye? When he, he, I, yeah. don't know, yeah. I don't know yeah. what he yeah. was yeah. saying yeah. or yeah. something along yeah. those lines. Mm -hmm. Wasn't he dropped? Did he get yes. something he like that? Yeah. yeah, some of these decisions yeah. have to be made. Yeah. And yeah. They, they're not always nice, but yeah. they have to be made because yeah. at the end of the day, we want to look at something. We want to do something that benefits the brand. So if the person, the person no longer fits what your brand stands for, yeah. I guess, see, yeah, you just have right. to move on. You see, the opposite is true, again, yeah. where... You s the thing about dovetailing of, of, mm. of values is mm. very critical. Mm. Because uh, remember Kaepernick? Yeah. Kaepernick had his own position. Exactly. That's right? a perfect example. Yeah, so, so they could have dropped him, but because of the values of the company that, that matched what, what was happening, they couldn't because exactly. they, were, they, were, they, were, they were. I'm sure. So, I'm sure some brands dropped him. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. They yeah. did. They did drop him. Yeah. But you see, they, the brands themselves had their own basis in terms of the their, their what do you call it, their belief systems yeah. and so mm -hmm. forth yeah. so they they maybe uh adidas uh, who dropped them adidas uh, no no it was nike first i can't remember balance i, I can't remember the, the league uh, no I, I'm, I'm sorry i'm talking about kanye kanye who dropped who dropped kanye uh, uh, from adidas yeah. yes, gap yeah. 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 you see so so based on their values yeah. their value system they said we can't tolerate this yeah right but Nike's values are let be people be who they are and mm -hmm. we don't judge anybody. Yeah. So it, it, it was in line, yeah. so they couldn't, they couldn't, literally they had to have this meeting like, guys, are we, are we for this or are we not? Yeah. Then they make that decision from there. But brands are allowed to do whatever they want according mm -hmm. to who they are. Yeah. And that's the thing about getting the perfect fit and influencer that actually, that you, guy, that you are co connected with properly. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can actually get over these things. I feel like sometimes, I guess it's also delicate because I feel like sometimes as a brand, if you are quick to drop someone, depending on who they are, I mean, like someone like a Cristiano, mm -hmm. when you read the comments on Twitter, you do get a wave of, say, Manu fans who are like, you know, this guy should go, he's mm -hmm. just proud, he's arrogant. And then he also has his loyal supporters who were with them from mm. Manchester to Madrid and to it, yeah exactly so when you then stick with that someone you know and you're loyal to uh, that influencer mm. I feel like it also has the effect of cementing uh, uh, diad like yeah. be, what do they call them Beyonce's fans a beehive. Yeah. <laughs> Those people I feel like it has the, <laughs> the effect of like uh, really cementing that because mm. also, I mean, influencers are people and you know people, life is never a straight line. Yeah, you that's know, true. Make you know, you go up, you go, it mm. come yeah. down. But I feel like having that humanity mm. as a brand to then sometimes within reason to accept some of these things, mm -hmm. and not to just quickly, oh, um, so and so had an affair with, and then it's like, Dropped. yeah, you know, mm. yeah, it depends, it depends on the level of, yeah, of, of discretion. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it could be like, we mm, can't, yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes like, yeah, this it's one we can't, what are we yeah. endorsing here, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so mm. and then sometimes it's like the principle overrides everything, mm -hmm. like what Nike, Nike went over the. For me, I think they were very admirable when they did that because they 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 proved that they they will go over any they, their core belief was that, mm -hmm. and that's what ran, ran the company. That's what made the Jordans. That what that's what made the Serena everything. Mm -hmm. So then they said, okay, guys, I, we're gonna we are going to be in trouble. Yeah, but. Let's stick Let's to our stick. principle. Yeah. Exactly. So the same thing happens. The opposite is true. Mm. To say, I just said, no, 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 this is not right. Yeah. We're going to stick to our principles, even though it's going to hurt. So thank you so much.
Thank you so, uh, so much for happiness. coming and sharing your expertise. Uh, I know you don't like being called an expert. Yes. <laughs> 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 I just know some stuff. Okay, no, yeah. sharing your sharing your opinions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, we'll catch you in the next. Picture Hub is a fully-fledged content creation studio based in Harare, Zimbabwe. At our core, we are storytellers with a focus on film production, photography, and voice recording. We believe that the essence of any organization, corporate brand, or individual is a well-curated story. Our passion lies in bringing these stories to life authentically with undeniable excellence. Our portfolio includes television commercials, web series, documentaries, podcasts, and voice recordings. For more information, visit our website www.picturehubzim.com or email info at picturehubzim.com for inquiries. 